All right, I have another climbing hold review for you here so you can help navigate the tricky world of spending that money on climbing holds online. It can be really hard because pictures really don't do it justice. You're buying sculptures that are made to be touched and held. So it's the more you see of them and the more you get to touch them and visually see them, the better off you are. In this video, I am going to talk about a company that I'm actually friends, at least on Facebook, with the owner, and I feel like I owe him a good review, but at the same time, I need to be honest with you guys, and to be quite frank, there are some holds from this company that I cannot recommend buying, and I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. First, I want to talk to you about some of the best holds that uh, you can get, and I would actually highly recommend some of these. Hey, the first one, this is a big boy. It's a fairly monstrous hold. It's in the formation set, and I actually really, really like this hold. I have not set with it yet, so this is just my first impressions. Um, it is called the Falcon in the formation set, and the reason why I like it is because of the different things that it allows you to do that you don't get from a normal climbing hold, like a fist jam. Hey, you can really kind of wedge your fist in this hold and have a really solid fist jam. You don't have to do anything tricky with setting up two holds really close to, to each other on the wall. You got it right here. Now the bolt hole is kind of high. It's up there, but the hold that you're holding is down here. So without these set screws in here, which are actually really nice and they have metal inserts in most of the set screws, uh, which I'm pleasantly surprised with, uh, you're going to have a really big time, or really, sorry, a really big problem with this spinning on the wall, um, unless it's hanging vertical. So you got the bolt hole here, you got your two set screws here, which you are definitely going to need if you set this hold on the wall anywhere other than dead vertical, okay, because that is a lot of leverage that's going to pull that hold and cause a spinning hold. But I really like it. Now in that same set, and this is probably the, the best bang for your buck holds that I have seen yet. Okay, this is the, again, the formation holds, and it is the small formation jugs. And this retails at $68, and there's 10 of them. So that means that you're paying $6.80 per hold and these jugs are big jugs. They are small in size so you have not a lot of resin so in that in that sense they're a really good design. Now they are kind of horny okay horny like a horn okay so you're gonna be climbing on it a little different than you would a normal formation uh, however they are really good holds. They even upside down. A lot of times when you have jugs that are small in size, you, you tend to have steep angles on the back side, which just make it tricky for setting because you can use it in so many different ways. These holds do not have that. Okay, really nice. This pattern up here is not sharp, so you're not going to cheese grate across this, at least too bad. That was one of my concerns. And I was glad to see that that wasn't the case. Uh, so best bang for your buck from on-site climbing is the small formation jugs. There's 10 of them. And right now they retail for $68. I really like that. Uh, another thing that I really like from this company is the wheat feet. Now, I did not buy the wheat holds because it looked like you had these sharp angular cuts on here or changes and I just don't like that in a hold too much because the opportunity for these points right here to be rough when you're climbing tear up your hands more and your shoes more uh, is higher but he's actually done a really good job in shaping these it, you keep that sharp angle look but he's rounded it off enough that it's not really gonna be super hard 
on your skin, at least with the wheat feed. I haven't seen any of the other wheat holds, but I am pleasantly surprised with these guys. Really nice. And as far as a foothold goes, man, you're going to be able to use these suckers on a 60 degree angle for your feet just fine. And actually, they would work as a great crimp on even a 60 degree angle wall. So we might do that in our gym here at Clarksville Climbing. Uh, you might see these on our 60 degree wall at one point. I'm sure you will. Maybe not tomorrow or maybe not today, but maybe. We've got a big set day coming today. So, I don't know whether you guys want to see my favorite, one of my other favorite holds that actually convinced me that I needed to buy from on-site or the holds that you just, just don't buy. And in fact, Jordan, if you are watching this video, please don't be offended. This is my opinion. And I'm going to give you some advice, and I hope to see you redo these holds because right now it's a really good concept. I really like the idea. I was super excited to get these holds, but I was really let down because of some of the things that I'm going to talk about right now. And that is these honeycomb holds. A really cool concept, and there's all kinds of different curves on this that allow it to have the potential to be a really fun hold to set with. Now the problems with it, and you might be able to see it right here as a good example, there are some really sharp, sharp points on this. As, your, as this pattern here was created, the lines were so close together that in some points, I don't know if this was a failure in the shaping or a failure in the manufacturing of it. But regardless, these fins or these breaks in between the honeycombs are non-existent and it becomes extremely sharp because that resin wants to go into that space but it just can't. So it leaves these really sharp points and I've actually had to go through and carve some of these down before we use it on our wall so it doesn't cause injury and that's nothing that you want so if you redo this pattern you can take I, I don't know exactly what you did to create that this what I would do is I would take a bolt head and I would carve it down or I'd sand it down so those edges were nice and sharp and then I would press it into the foam now go a little bit wider with this pattern, just a little bit wider, okay, a little bit wider than this. Maybe keep it fairly consistent with that on the width. But then don't stop there. You need to take it a soft bristle brush, you can even take a paintbrush and just go around and feather everything. And what that's going to do is it's going to knock down all of those sharp angles, those sharp ridges, and actually make it look like this. Which is actually brings up another problem that I have with these holds, the inconsistency in the texture. So right here, you have it so it's nice and soft, those soft lines. I, that's what I would have loved to have seen over the entire hold series, but that's not what I saw. Uh, the really sharp edges and prone to take a little bit of skin off, a little bit of extra rubber off of your shoe. Uh, so before we set with these, it's going to be a pain because we have to go through and file these down. I'm not going to put a hold on it's my walls that's going to injure my clients or the people that are in here climbing. I can't do that. So that's not all with this set. Let me get this bad boy. Really cool shape, by the way. I love it, but there's some problems that I have with it from a shaping aspect, okay? Right here is one of them. It has a very rough scratched pattern. Now I'm guessing that that was done to increase the friction, so you just really stuck right there more. You've already got this really cool pattern going on. If you want to increase the friction right there, 
don't just scratch it up like a crazy person. Okay, do it with a plan. You have this cool pattern, bring it up here. Just make sure that you brush it so it's those ridges aren't going to cut into your skin, okay? So it just looks a little sloppy how it's scratched up right here. Okay, same thing over here. So I think that this, I really do think that this was done to increase the friction, which it will, and it will, it will climb good. But from a shaping standpoint, and when somebody is spending as much money as they are on these holds, they want something that is really quality. I want something that's really quality, and I hope you want something that's really quality as well. One other thing with, the, with this hold specifically is there's this little ridge right here. Okay, It terminates right here, and it terminates right here. What's going on with this? Like, it, it seems like you're putting this in here and then you thought, oh no, it'd be cooler if we did this, which I, I agree. Yeah, that's, that's cooler. It makes it a, a really cool hold because now you have this big bump right here and you have this big bump right here. But don't just leave this because it's saying it's just advertising mistakes. You know, it, it doesn't look finished just leaving it terminate here and here. There's no pattern. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Now, this hold has kind of that same line that you created. It comes into this big scoop here, which has the, the cat scratches again, which I don't like. Um, I think you should increase the friction by taking the same pattern that you have up here and putting it down here. Okay, just make sure that it's soft. But then it comes into this line, and it wraps around here, and then it opens up, okay, and it terminates. Because you open that up, it just it terminates right there, and it actually looks really nice. You could have done that same thing here and kept everything about this hold and actually made it even better. You take this line and just make it wrap around and just very gently and softly connect into this. Okay, That would have looked really cool. You wouldn't have noticed it as a mistake that was made, but the way that it's left, it looks like a mistake. So I cannot recommend to buy these honeycomb holds. Super unfortunate because I love the concept of them. I really hope that Jordan recreates these holds and re-releases them as like uh, Honeycomb 2.0 or or something to let us know that they have been redone. And I will buy another set because I like the idea, but I definitely don't like all the time that I'm going to have to spend carving those sharp points down. So lastly, the hold that made me even go with on-site climbing, and that is this guy, the Aztec calendar. I just, as far as a creativity standpoint, I just think it's awesome. Now, as far as a hold goes, it's it's a cool looking sloper. Okay, there's nothing really super exciting about it as far as the hold aspect goes. Okay, but. It, it is really exciting as far as just a shaping, a sculpting standpoint goes. This guy retails for $79. It's kind of pricey for what you're getting, but if you just love the, the sculpting of it like I did, then go get you one. Okay, that has been, this is my review of on-site climbing holds. I've been really impressed with most of the holds. It's just that one set the honeycomb, which unfortunately I bought two full lines of, and so now I've got to go through and sand it all of the, inspect every single hole to make sure that there's no sharp points. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you right here next time on Climber Dad. Please share with your friends. Hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and that I can should continue. If you'd like to see something else or have a different opinion than what I've shared, please comment down below. I see all of those at this point. So we'll see you next time right here on Climber Dad. Whew, I hope that was a good one. I want to get these holds on the wall.